My question is, I don't know if I'm addressing this uh, question too, but I just found out about this meeting about the bond, the prospect school, and all these things. I just found out. He kept it very secretive for me to find out. Okay, now, no, I know you all understand you've been having meetings, you've been having uh, presentations, the way of that other school, church, or whatever, but I didn't know about it. And, 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 and everybody that know me, when it comes down to Prospect School, it always been my number one uh, 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 priority here to have the Prospect School open. Now, what I'm hearing tonight is that you're going to uh, have it for a kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, and kindergarten. What about the uh, Prospect School that it wasn't what it were before? Now, who, who am I answering the question? Who, who, who I answer this? Because I, because what it, what it, what, what I was under uh, the impression that once Prospect School was open, it would be open for from kindergarten to sixth grade, not pre-K and kindergarten. And all of this labor and money and time and effort get ready to go into pre-K, even though I know pre-K and kindergarten need for well, kindergarten, but still I, I, I'm saying, what about the Prospect School itself? From kindergarten to sixth grade, what about probably, I think it went up to sixth grade, if I'm not mistaken. And when that school was closed, it was devastated to us. And to open it for just a kindergarten, and I'm just finding out, nobody never told me, now you get ready to vote on this on the 14th. I ain't know nothing about it. Nobody told me nothing. I've been in this community for 38 years. And I've been a community advocate forever. I know other things, but everybody kept this in like a secret for me. And I have, I have grandchildren, I have children, I live in this community. Nobody told me nothing. So now you turn it into a kindergarten? What about prospect school? Let me let me just say this 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 uh, project has been advertised uh, for quite some time. It's been on the billboard, community journal, and we talked about it. And we talked about it several board meetings. But let me get back to your question as to why we are turning this into a kindergarten center. First of all, we have children in Hackendorn on the third floor. We have children at Hagendorn, little children, little babies on the third floor at Hagendorn, who's climbing those stairs every day. We, we are renting or leasing a building uh, from, the, from the diocese. For years? Yes, for years. So now we cannot do all this at one time, but we have to start somewhere. And we're starting with this, this center here for the, for the uh, kindergarten kids. Which means that the children from Hagedorn will be going to Marshall and the kids from Marshall and ECC will be going to Prospect. Which will save us at least almost a half a million, well more than a half a million dollars a year. Yes. So now, if I am not here, first of all, I don't, I don't, if, if, if Reverend LaPierre says he's never heard of it, Maybe she had But what I'm, say, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying to all of you all is that, listen, we are not here to hide anything. We are doing this for, the, for our young children so that they will have a decent place to learn. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't think I need a mic because I have a very loud voice. Can't I understand what the lady said, okay? If I recall, some six, seven, eight years ago, there was Ten a years ago. that goes forth to repair Prospect School and some other school. And nothing was done to Prospect School. One of my questions is that, I think the answer is little. If you make this a Pentagon school, then you have to get all the bus to take the kids from the entire village into that school. Now, for what you said, that's not going to happen. What you're doing is removing the kids that mm -hmm. have other location back to the school. Is that true? Or you taking them from the entire village? Bill, this is for the entire village. Okay. And this is these are buildings that we are leasing, by the way. Okay. Yeah, we don't own those buildings. Yes, that's true, too. But the thing is that if it's the entire village, do you already have a contract set in place or do you have to get a contract for buses to take all the kids from the entire village into the school? That means that your cost that you come up with is not right. 
Right. You're aware that we you're aware that we have the busing already. Yeah, but you don't have the bus for every student. That's right. Mm -hmm. Only kindergarten. We do have for kindergarten. Yes. Okay. We do. And that's my question. Right. Are you already contract for a bus? For yes, that's that's been in, that's been a, that's been around for quite some time. Okay, now since I'm up here talking, I'll go first. The cost that it came up with is eighteen million dollars. And I don't want to explain why I'm asking this question. I'm 40 years in the construction industry. I last year. And I, I'm a, it's a little concerned about this $15 million. Okay. Who is going to be responsible for the overrun? And if anyone, including the architect, can tell me that there's not going to be an overrun on a project, something's wrong. Because I can take you to a project in New York City with all the New York City schools, 50 million. It's always an overrun. As the architect, I'd like to answer that question. Um, we are bound to bring this project within budget for you. Um, we have a successful track record of accurately budgeting projects, um, and we've had no instance ever in the past where a job has went down because we have over-designed or allowed a client to make us over-design a project over the budget. That is not to say that our jobs have not come in over budget, but they are remedied. We are contractually bound to make your project come within budget. And in future design meetings with this building, if there are wish lists given that actually make this something more than we're presenting tonight, we are going to keep control of those costs. And they put us at odds with some people in administration in the district who are looking for something else, but it's up to us to limit that. Okay, on this special abatement uh, situation, on the addition that you're adding to the school, you have, you have to have a foundation. Okay, was any consideration taken for a possibility of contaminated soil? That will automatically be an overrun if you didn't take that into consideration. Built into the project estimate are contingencies to deal with conditions such as that. There are structural contingencies and environmental contingencies built into the project. If you were to look carefully at the estimate, you could see those line items in there. Yes, I'm very new here. I'm very new here. But my grandfather was born. And I, like, like, he said, he's talking about my grandfather. Okay, again, I said, my question is about the health issue of the uh, prospect. Um, I was told um, there was a lot of problems with the school before they closed it. Um, and I'm concerned is this, but well, how will we know if y'all got to fix these issues, to, uh, will they be covered up? How will, we, how, will they, how will the community know this got to be done? I mean, all this sound well and good that you got to make it look pretty and all that, but we want to know the health safety of the school before our children go in there. So, can anyone answer that question for us, please? Sure, I'll, I'll take this one again. Uh, as we touch the spaces within the building, which is every space within the building, uh, every space will be tested ahead of time for the presence of lead, asbestos, or PCBs, the three most common hazardous building materials, and they'll be dealt with in our plans and remediated. When we open up the ceiling and we find there's asbestos pipe installation or pipe elbows there, they will be dealt with. They will be uh, abated and new insulation put up there prior to the new ceiling being put in place. Uh, lead paint on door frames and uh, things like that, that'll be tested and dealt with as well. Asbestos floor tile, when we're replacing the flooring, I'm talking about basically the, the three most common uh, construction materials where you're going to find these are, are floor tiles, insulation, and paint. Um, and we'll, we'll deal with the floor tiles in the same fashion. They will be abated in accordance with New York State Industrial Codes also. So every space will be tested for the presence, 
It will be identified if it's there, and it will be dealt with in the plan and therefore in the construction contract. Okay, because we do it with works code that we need to see. We want to know is it a good idea based on the fact that our schools are overrun. Um, I know we have an issue with kindergarten and sixth grade. But now my question is, we do say that the, the state is going to help us. What guarantee? Now I know that there's a certain thing in the state that you must have a certain code number in order to have that money guaranteed. Our state does not have a budget. So how are we certain that this money is definitely going to be guaranteed if we don't even have a budget right now in the state? So how do we know that if you begin work and we, because it's Floating the bond still means that it's on the community until the state reimburses you. Now, how are we guaranteed that the state will reimburse this money? That's just one. I wrote a question down, but that's one question. All right. So let's let's do that question first. I'm going to ask for some help from Bob with this. Um, I, I, I'll I'll address a portion of the funding, which is Excel Aid. Excel Aid has already been established. The money is there. It comes from a dormitory authority. And it's given out through the State Education Department, and every school district in New York State is given an allotment of that. Uh, we represent about 40, 40 some odd districts on Long Island, and I'm going to tell you that 90 to 95 percent of those clients have already utilized their Excel aid for fear that it won't be there. Um, you have a, a unique and wonderful opportunity here, and you should absolutely act on this now. That is the portion. That's Excel aid. It's set aside already. I'm going to have to ask Bob to talk about the building aid and how that plays into it. Before we, before we talk about the building aid, if the school does not use the Excel aid, we will lose it and it will go to the other school that is in the cycle. As he said, the Excel aid is, is a one-time offer to the school district. This offer is to Hempstead. If we do not use it, it will go to the other school that's in the cycle. Do we have like a per, like I know that there, now what I found out by, because I was going to help the safety committee, there is a certain code, you, there's a certain account that has to be open for you. Even though they offer it to you, it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed. So like you said, there's a possibility it could go to another state. Is there a code that's being set up so that when we are ready to access that money, that it's available to you? What is this called? Is it a cash flow? Is it like a cash flow account? We have to start it by the day. We do have it. We have it. We already have to submit to the state. This is the money. Well, you do not get the money until the board, until the, the district approved. Is it the work is done or district approved? The, the, the district approved the project. You know, just to elaborate a little bit, in fact, Dr. Garcia and, and I have heard a little concern yesterday along similar lines. How are we assured that this project will come at no cost to the taxpayers? So actually, Dr. Garcia called a gentleman who's the executive director at SED for all management services. And uh, he was also having inquiries, believe it or not, from the assembly on the same topic from a local representative. And uh, when he saw the plan put together by the municipal advisors, where we're taking XL8, which is there waiting for us, and if we expend it, the, the subsequent building aid that will come, he agreed wholeheartedly that this is a project that should cost the taxpayers nothing. So it's a special case under XL8. Only time this has ever been done like this. I'm going to say this because I don't go into contract with anybody until I see something in writing. And even if this was without state, I'm sorry, I paid $13,000 in property taxes here. Yes. I want something in writing from the state that this money is available to because I lived in Roosevelt and we floated a bond and we had to pay for it. So I'm so, I don't mean you know I don't mean to see, sound funny, but the state needs to give us a guarantee that that money is available because you could tell me we, no, you know I have a saying don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. We need to know that we are not going to be responsible for this money, and if, the, if it, whatever it takes, we need something in a guaranteed contract with Hempstead School District and the state of New York because when we had that crash with Wall Street. A lot of people didn't get their money. I know that for a fact. So I'm saying we want some type of guarantee. Now I'm not, I'm for it. Because I'm hoping that when we get them out of ECC and when we get them out of Hagadon, that there'll be some money to build a sixth grade center.